I am restoring my father's 1953 Bull of a Commodore wristwatch, and I'd like to restore the original crystal if I can. The watch has many nicks and scratches, and a few marks that I would call gouges, but it is not cracked and the edges are in good shape. If there was any question about the integrity of the crystal, then I would replace it. But it seems like it's in good enough shape and there's enough material that some sanding shouldn't make it too thin. And we are going to try polishing this crystal with this set of st sanding sticks. Now I, I can't imagine going through every single grit in the box. So here's what we're gonna try. So 1,500, 2,400, 3,600, and then 8,000. And um, I'll probably step in and, and do poly watch once we uh, touch it with this. I, I don't know how much that's gonna do. But let's start down here and see if we can start reducing some of those scratches that are in the crystal. But right now I'm gonna start by concentrating on that main scratch that's right in the center. And this will give me an idea of how aggressively this uh, 1500 grit uh, sanding pad is going to sand. I'm trying to be as even as I can. Now I'm going to pay my attention to any other gouges or scratches back on this surface now that it's all been blended together a little better. By thinning the surface of the crystal, we were reducing the relative depth of the scratches. Ideally, we want a uniform buff across the entire surface. Just getting a couple of shiny spots there. Here's what came off. So this used to be my crystal. So I'm going to get a little bit of water and wipe this off. And then we're going to move on to the next polishing stick. Well, I'm betting that that's going to be almost invisible. If we can successfully polish this without making it so thin that it just caves in on itself. So it's completely non-reflective right now. Let's move on to uh, 2400. Okay, I'm just finishing up with the 3600. I actually decided to add another step up. I added 6000 before we go on to the 8000, just because I feel like there needs to be a little bit more of a, uh, a step between the 3000 and the 8000. So now I'm just working on this rolled edge. 3600 actually is starting to restore the clarity to the crystal. I think I might like to pull the Rodico out so I could just look through the crystal at this time. A little bit of residue there, so let me get rid of that. So here's what we have so far. Six thousand. And I'm thinking of this as a polishing process, not so much as a sanding process. Okay, so we've moved on to 8,000. Now let me put that over the text. So far we did a pretty good job with the polishing sticks. I think now would be a good time actually to get some measurements. I've learned from past experience that you should measure for a replacement crystal before you accidentally break one. I meant to do this earlier. We'll keep this in our files. So we're going to clean it up just a little bit more. And I think I'll put it under the microscope. Then we will do polywatch. Polywatch might be my favorite process. The microscope shows just about every imperfection but trust me, this crystal was looking much better, and I was optimistic about using the abrasive paste polish, polywatch. 
Poly watch. Just going to use that with a cloth. We're just going to start with a blob right in the center. I think most of that first blob was liquid. A little schmear. Changing directions, rolling over the edges. Once the polish starts to haze up, I like to give it a light buffing with a clean microfiber. Okay, hey, that's really looking pretty good. I'm getting down at a low angle so I could see the reflection of my work light. Okay, let's give it another good rub down of Polywatch. I'm going to pause camera here and we're going to go over to the microscope. Okay, so it looked really good, but I think it can look better. Let's do another rub down. I'm doing it without the Rodico this time, just to make it easier so I could check in between. And I also think that this allows me to put a little bit firmer pressure on the crystal because there were a couple of marks that were still visible on the surface that I was really hoping I could knock down further. And you know, you can't really see it with the naked eye, but they were very evident under the microscope. Microscopes are a good thing, but sometimes it can be a little distressing looking at something under a microscope because it looks good to the naked eye. And then you realize, mission control, there's a problem. Okay, back to the microscope. Yes! This is what we were looking for. There's good clarity looking through the crystal without too much lens distortion. In the harshest light position, you can still see the remnants of the scratches and gouges from years of wear, but the worst claw marks are gone. This crystal is hand pressed onto the watch and is secured by a metal bezel. This is exciting. I'll make sure the crystal and watch are dust free before installing it. With the bezel pressed firmly into place, you can finally see the reward at the end of this journey. I couldn't be happier seeing my dad's watch returned to its former glory. To learn more about this bull of a watch project, please check out my in-depth troubleshooting video and detailed complete watch service video, links in the description below. While you're down there, please click like to support the channel and I'd love to have you as a subscriber. The channel is Watch With Mike, I look forward to our next time together.